The statues being removed are what's called heroic statuary, and their subjects tend to be men involved in Europe's imperial exploits. In Belgium, there's Leopold II, who's been accused, rightly in my view, of genocide. In Bristol, there's the slave owner Edward Colston in the United Kingdom. In the United States, there's the leaders of the Confederacy who fought in favor and to defend slavery. What these statues do is they tell people from marginalized groups that their views don't matter, that they have to adapt to European societies and they need to tolerate living under the shadow of men who oppress their ancestors. What's happening now is that people are listening. That's the big difference. Many of these statues have been the subjects of campaigns and petitions and appeals for many years for them to be removed. And all of those appeals have been rebuffed. Roads must fall started because of student activists in South Africa, tired of colonial iconography, tired of white supremacy in our curriculums, tired of the crisis of representation of black and other minority ethnic people in our institutions. Some people will tell you that to remove a statue is to erase history, but the problem with that is that statues aren't very good at telling us our history. What statues tell us is one very simple message, that the man that they depict, and it almost always is a man, is a hero. History is complicated. History is messy and contradictory. Statues are literally set in stone. They cannot adapt to changing understandings of history and also changes in the societies that surround them. A lot of these statues are a lot younger than people think. The statue of Edward Colston was put up in the 1890s. He died in the 1720s. So the reasons for putting it up have got more to do with the 1890s, with the late Victorian age, than they have to do with his own lifetime in the 17th century. Some people will say that to leave these statues up will allow a debate about both sides of the legacy of these men. Well, the problem is very often these statues have plaques affixed to them that give one side of the story. The statue of Edward Colston called him a wise and virtuous man. He was neither wise nor virtuous. He was a slave trader and a mass murderer. Statues cannot tell us the complexity of history if they are not contextualized, where the other side of the history imprinted onto them in some way, then I think they have to be removed and put in a place where we actually do tell history, which is a museum. Heroic statues of individuals is a very dated form of memorialization. It's not something we tend to do very much in the modern world. If you think about the works of public art that we've come to love, things like the Angel of the North, they're not figurative, they're not individuals. They're much, much more interpretive, much more artistic. What I suspect is that in the future, people will look back and be astonished that we ever tolerated living under the shadow of statues of men who were slave traders or colonialists, or in the case of Leopold of the Belgians, someone who committed genocide.